Fibre is often spoken about in the context of gut health. However, fibre is beneficial to health in so many other ways. My name is Elle and I'm a registered dietitian specialising in disordered eating and sports nutrition. We're going to explore the benefits of fibre and how you can incorporate enough fibre into your diet to avail of these benefits. Firstly, what is fibre? Dietary fibre is a type of carbohydrate that isn't absorbed in the body. Unlike other carbohydrates, fibre is not broken down into sugar molecules during digestion. Instead, it passes through the digestive system relatively intact and encourages the movement of material inside the gut. Fibre is found exclusively in plants. Fruits and vegetables are great sources of fibre, but other plants are rich in fibre too, like whole grains, beans and legumes, and nuts and seeds. There are two main types of fibre, soluble and insoluble fibre. Soluble fibre dissolves in water, forming a gel-like substance in the digestive tract. This is found in things like oats, barley, legumes and fruits. It's easy to digest, which helps to feed the good bacteria in our gut. Insoluble fibre doesn't dissolve in water and isn't easy to digest, so it adds bulk to stool, which encourages it to pass through the digestive system and prevent constipation. This is found in whole grains, nuts and seeds and vegetables. Not only can fibre help to prevent constipation and promote regular bowel movements, but it also supports a healthy gut microbiota. What's the gut microbiota, I hear you ask? The gut microbiota refers to the collection of beneficial bacteria or probiotics that we have in our gut. These are important for providing us with energy and nutrients, supporting immune function, and keeping our gut healthy. Imbalances in the good and bad gut bacteria is known as dysbiosis, and this can not only cause uncomfortable gut symptoms like bloating and constipation, but can also increase the risk of diseases like inflammatory bowel disease and diabetes. So how can we look after our gut microbiota? Prebiotic fiber feeds the beneficial bacteria in our guts. Inulin and oligofructose are the two main types of prebiotic fiber, and both of these have been shown to increase the levels of probiotics in our gut, as well as reduce cholesterol levels, reduce the risk of colon cancer, promote immunity, and help with the synthesis of certain vitamins, especially vitamin K, and increase the absorption of magnesium and calcium. Fermented foods like sauerkraut, kombucha, pickles, as well as yogurt and kefir are great sources of prebiotic fiber. Fruits, veg, and whole grains also contain prebiotic fiber like onions, garlic, apples, and bananas. As I mentioned, mentioned, fibre is not just important for our good health. One of the other amazing benefits of fibre is that it can remove excess cholesterol and other waste from our body. High fibre diets have been closely correlated to a reduction in the risk of cardiovascular disease. This is because fibre can help to reduce certain toxins and nutrients from being absorbed into the blood, including cholesterol. It has been estimated that for every 7 grams extra of fibre per day, it can reduce the risk of heart disease by 9% and stroke by 7%. Have you ever heard that oats can reduce cholesterol? Well, oats and barley contain a type of soluble fibre known as beta-glucan, which binds to cholesterol-rich bile acids and prevents them from being absorbed. Research has shown that 3 grams of beta-glucan per day is required to help lower cholesterol levels, with one study finding that LDL, or bad cholesterol levels, were reduced by 15%, and total cholesterol levels were reduced by almost 9% when individuals consumed 3 grams of beta-glucan per day for 8 weeks. You don't have to go chomping down porridge to avail of these benefits, as any recipe recipe that provides at least 30 grams of oats will provide around 1 gram of beta-glucan, so including oats in the diet through things like granola, muesli and oat cakes can be really helpful. Barley is also a good source of beta-glucan, so adding barley to soups, stews or even risottos can help to increase your intake of this beneficial fibre. A diet rich in fibre can also help with appetite and blood sugar regulation. Fibre can help us to feel physically fuller for longer as it absorbs water and swells, which increases the feeling of fullness. High fibre foods tend to have a lower glycemic index, meaning that they cause blood sugar levels to rise and fall slowly, which helps to provide longer lasting energy and keep our energy and appetite levels more stable. Fibre cannot be broken down by digestive enzymes, but it can be metabolised by certain species of bacteria within the gut through a process known as anaerobic fermentation. This process produces short-chain fatty acids, which can promote satiety by slowing gut motility and can support glucose regulation and lipid metabolism. Glucose metabolism is regulated by the production of the hormone insulin, which is responsible for taking glucose in the bloodstream into the cells so that it can be used for energy. Long-term studies have shown that fibre can reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes, but can also improve markers of diabetes, such as HbA1c, which is a test that measures the amount of glucose attached to red blood cells and gives an indication of how well your diabetes is controlled. A recent systematic review and meta-analysis on the impact of dietary fibre and whole grains in the management of diabetes highlighted improved insulin sensitivity, HbA1c, lipid profile and weight regulation. Dietary fibre has also been associated with reduced risk 
risk of colorectal cancer, which is a term used to describe both colon and rectal cancers. Colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer worldwide. Numerous studies have found an association between dietary fiber intake and risk of colorectal cancer. There are a few reasons for this. High fiber diets have been associated with lower levels of inflammation in the colon and a reduced risk of developing polyps, for which some types can become cancerous. Fiber can also encourage regular bowel movements, which means that harmful chemicals spend less time in the bowel. And the production of the short chain fatty acid butyrate can reduce the risk of tumors in the bowel developing. Research has suggested that an increase of fiber by seven grams can reduce the risk of colorectal cancer by 8%. So as we can see, fiber has many benefits for our health. It is advised that adults should be getting at least 30 grams of dietary fiber per day to optimize these health benefits. But figures suggest that the average fiber intake for adults falls short by around 40%, with 18 grams being the average intake. You can increase the fiber in your diet by choosing high fiber, whole grain breakfast cereals, choosing whole grain breads, pasta, and other cereals, keeping the skin on fruits and vegetables as this is where the fiber is, and topping meals with nuts and seeds. Adding things like lentils, beans, and chickpeas to curries, soups, and stews, and including fruits and vegetables as part of a snack can all help to boost your fiber intake. Be mindful to gradually increase your fiber intake in order to avoid symptoms like bloating and gas as your digestive system adjusts. As much as fiber can be helpful for preventing constipation, too much fiber can sometimes cause it. So ensure to drink plenty of fluid throughout the day, particularly with meals that are high in fiber. And be conscious to increase your fluid intake as you increase your fiber intake to help it to move through the digestive system. Fiber is essential to support our gut, but as you can see, it impacts our health in so many other ways too. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and be sure to like this video and hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on any other great evidence-based nutrition information.